We're back out here at the barn and we're ready to get started on our second step in this pecky cypress millwork. And we're installing that fungus wood. We're gonna continue this. And for those of you who didn't catch the last video, pecky cypress was the wood we're using. It is actually a fungus wood that is rotten. So this stuff grows in the swamps of Louisiana and it gets attacked by a fungus. So once that fungus attacks it, it creates these natural like gouges and decay in the wood. And then that wood is simply milled like any other lumber. And that is the look of this wood that we're using. So we've since completed for the most part our wainscot that we started in the last video. I've got like a couple more sections of that to do, but I'm waiting on a stone to go around the firebox. And then we can build our pecky mantle up and then tie our wainscot into it. So it's kind of an order of operations there, but today we are starting on beams. So uh, let me show you what we've got here. We've already got some of the framing up for our perimeter beam, then we got filled beams. So we're just gonna get after it. Here's a look at what we've got going on. You can see our blocking. These are just two by fours and these are block two by four screwed in from the top down and that gives us our height of the beam so when i put my one by four pecky on the bottom of this which i've already done over here that'll get me down to the size of the beam that i need and then i can wrap all on the face of this with my big one by ten pecky and that will be our perimeter beam so we'll continue to add this bottom side of the beam and you'll see the way these beams come together. Obviously they're not mitered. You can tell by the way we're constructing this. But um, this beam on the outside, the perimeter beam, is technically a half size perimeter beam. Usually you do this because you don't want a gigantic beam going around. The perimeter just doesn't look right. But the filled beams will be full size of course, but they will not be uh, as big as this. They're gonna be scaled down. So they will run into this perimeter beam. So we'll get these in and we're gluing all these joints up, making sure everything looks good. And this is, we're treating this like stain grade, although it's technically gonna be more like a paint grade because they're gonna faux finish it. And the way that they're gonna faux finish it is with like some type of glazing. They did a sample of it. So I'm not 100% sure what that is, but um, we're still trying to keep everything tight. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and rip the uh, members for our framing of our filled beams. And these are gonna be ripped out of two by sixes and we'll rip these to four inches exactly. And we're also gonna cut some blocking out of this material because once we rip to four inches, then that'll be the perfect size to make our down blocking for the height of these filled beams. And we're gonna need a lot of these. So we're just gonna set up a stop block on the chop saw as you see here and just start chopping. So these will be constructed um, after we chalk lines. And you can see here, we're chalking lines. It's actually a pretty cool shot here. Whenever I chalk this line, the dust looks pretty cool. How it floats away. But we're chalking uh, the whole thing out. I like to chalk, you only need to chalk one line because you only, only need to follow one line when you install. But I like chalking both just because it, you get to really feel, you know, get a feel for the room and you get to visualize it really and just make sure everything's laid out properly to how you like it and um, you know you're definitely not going to go on the wrong side of the line if you're chalking to so while well, those guys are constructing our filled beam framing i'm going to go find our blocking and our joist we did have to add blocking if you remember going back before this room even had drywall we had to add blocking because we knew these beams that we would add later now is uh, they weren't gonna hit the joist. You can see they're in the middle there and that's exactly where I have my stud finder. I'm locating these that we installed like six months ago. And that blocking that we added was made out of two by four. So I'm just gonna measure here and make sure I've got three and a half inches and make sure I'm right where I need to be. Um, that's a good thing about these style of stud finders. You can actually see the full picture of what's going on so what we do here is I don't know why Tom is nailing these in he thinks these are nails but they're actually screws I think he's confused and he thinks these are threaded nails no I'm joking but uh, what we're doing here is we're getting these set in place we mark off every two foot and we went ahead and just get everything like nailed in just with the hammer that way, whenever John comes and sends him in, he doesn't have to sit there and hold the screw and hold the block down and you know fight with it. It's just already ready for him. So he just sends it in 
and it's good to go. And again, these are installed every two feet. That's the way I like to do it, just to give it a good rigidity and structure and give that bottom piece, you know, something to just be up against every two foot. It's just the way I like to do it. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna measure a, a third hand or a dead man, whatever you wanna call it. And this is gonna help the guys and me because we're gonna need this, you'll see right here. It's just a lot easier than trying to hold it up, get it on your mark and screw it at the same time. You know, you could in theory, you know, add the screws to and measure off and nail the screw in like we just did. But you know, we're, there's only so many screws. We're only getting this into so many joists and it's just better to have that dead man there holding it up. And we just hoist it into place uh, it's cut like an inch longer than that dimension and then I just jam it and get it just basically squeezed in there and it works like a charm. So we will continue to just add these in place following those chalk lines. Just making sure we're going to be right on our lines and when they come together right here we'll just tack it in place and then also we'll come back and screw it in place. So there was a ton of joist on here. We didn't hit all of them. There was really no need to. It's gonna be plenty to hold this Peggy Cypress. This stuff is extremely lightweight. I mean, like super light. I don't even know what I could compare it to. It's because it's so uh, porous, I guess, because of the nature of that wood is that it just, it's lightweight and there's really no other way to put it. So we'll get these all installed all around the room and you really get to see the big picture here. Once all the framing members are in, you can kind of see the room taking shape and it's just, it just builds upon layers. So, I mean, that's anything with building. You're just one process after another process to get to your final look. And in this case, it's gonna be these architectural beams now. Obviously, these beams are just decorative. Traditionally, right, beams would hold up a room and hold up a structure. But um, I think, you know, obviously modern times, we, we decorate, we're decorating with beams, but you're still trying to communicate that same scale. Like the perimeter beam is thicker. That one's holding up the smaller ones on the inside. So that's what we're going for with this. So what we're doing here is ripping our uh, one by fours, actually one by sixes. We rip these out and rip them down to four inches. And uh, we actually, no, I take that back. We ripped these down to four and an eighth. So we didn't have any, um, like we weren't fighting against our framing. So we basically had a heavy um, 16th overhang on each side. And that way when we put our side pieces on these beams, you know, we don't have any gaps at the bottom due to the framing overhanging the finished piece. So we'll just continue with this, just like we did on that perimeter beam. We're gonna add all of these pieces first, and then we can sandwich these pieces in with our side pieces. You know, making sure everything's nice and tight, making sure everything looks good. And really, we're adding blocking to where the seams come together. We're having a lot of seams on this because with Peggy Cypress, it's a wood where you really can't specify. It's kind of one of those woods where it's like, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. You can specify some, but they don't really tell me like, hey, you know, you're gonna get enough links to go across this without seams. And really, seams aren't even bad here because it is that rough, rustic look, seams don't hurt at all and we'll have seams on everything. So you can see our flush joint here where these two beams intersect. It looks really clean and this is just glued, nailed in with 18 gauge brad nails into the framing and then also lock nailed into each other. And this is gonna be a really cool detail when our side pieces wrap around this. And we'll go ahead and get started on those side pieces now. Now when we install these, we're gonna do a half inch dropped overhang. And you can see on our perimeter beam there, we have that same half inch overhang. You can see it more in person than on camera, but you'll be able to see this real soon on this close up coming up. And I'm a big fan of the half inch overhang. You can see it there where the sideboard drops down a half inch beyond 
the bottom piece. I've done it in three quarter and I've done it in half inch as you see it here. And I gotta say, I am just a fan of the half inch. I feel like the three quarter would work if you had a thicker material, say like a four quarter inch thick material, which is, you know, lumber yard talk translation, one inch thick, uh, material, finished material that you're using versus the three quarter that we're using here. So I think it works better there or if the beams were much larger in scale, it might work better. But seeing it both ways, I mean, you can see that shadow line right there coming from uh, the doors from that natural light. That's already a pretty good shadow line with that half inch. If it was drop three quarter, it would be just overkill. So it all really depends. It's like a case by case. Um, you know, study your basis, how you want to base it. But um, I say you really can't go wrong with the half inch. It is the sweet spot. So as you can see here, we're just continuing to sandwich these in. And it's unfortunate. I really wish we could work this fast in real life. So that wraps it up for today's progress. But what do you think about this? These Pecky Cypress beams are nearly complete. It still just kind of blows my mind that this morning this wasn't here and now it is crazy thought <laughs> so next time you see this this ceiling we will be putting the crown in and the, the ceiling will be done completely done all I have to do is run my casing up to the bottom beams and run my mantle up over there above the fireplace and hit the beam it's this place is coming together